over the last 18 months, there's been a series of papers linking poor mitochondrial health with increased risk for severe or bad outcomes when it comes to viral infections. And because, big surprise, the mainstream media and health experts haven't really talked about this mechanistic connection, which has tangible applications and real-world applications showing poor mitochondrial health with increased risk for disease severity because there's very simple and accessible ways to improve mitochondrial health by way of regular exercise, feeding window compression, eating more of a low-carbohydrate, whole food-based diet, not consuming a lot of omega-6 industrial seed oils, as a way to reduce disease severity. Because look, uh, you know as well as I do, your friends, your family, uh, there's a lot of people in our community and the media at large that are so concerned with staying safe. But yet when you mention something like, well, hey, guess what? If you exercise, you improve your mitochondrial health. And since your mitochondria, these new papers have actually elucidated, plays a very important role when it comes to your body's innate immune system and mounting an appropriate antiviral immune response Maybe you should be eating better food. Maybe you should start intermittent fasting more. Maybe you should start exercising. They're like, whoa, bro, there's no correlation between exercise and this current public health problem. But what we're going to do today is actually refute that often mentioned hypothesis. Lifestyle interventions are very powerful when it comes to preventing a myriad of different diseases, even when it comes to decreasing the risk or the probability of a severe infectious disease like the current one that we're dealing with. So there's a series of papers from a group out in Switzerland. Johannes Birchscher, I think is how you pronounce his name. Several different articles have been emerged over the, over the last 18 months from, from this group. And I want to share these with you because this is, this is practical. This is tangible. This doesn't involve closing down businesses and schools and parks. This involves encouraging people to embark on healthy living and, and modalities to not only reduce risk for this one disease that the whole world is myopically focused on, but also reduce risk factors and probability of contracting various diseases, various diseases like fatty liver disease, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases like myocognitive impairment and Alzheimer's, even cancer, okay? So your mitochondria are really important. So you've heard about these intracellular organelles. If you think about your cells that comprise your body, Within your cells are little organelles, just like within your house, you know, you have your dishwasher, you have your hot water heater, you have your furnace, right? You have all these different tools in your house to enable your family to live and enable you to live. Well, each cell has little, little appliances and some of these appliances make proteins like the ribosomes. Some of these appliances are involved in detoxification like the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, the appliance within your cells that are responsible for making energy that your cells can utilize, known as ATP, are called your mitochondria because the foods that you eat can't directly be oxidized in the form of, in, in their existing form. They need to be broken down into these small little molecules known as ATP. And so that's really what life is about. So that's why you breathe. Breathing in oxygen. Oxygen uh, is, is an electron uh, acceptor in, in, in the final process of the electron transport chain. Uh, and it, it gets these, these electrons, you know, through this process of um, oxidative phosphorylation and so forth in the process of combusting those carbohydrates and the fats that you eat in your diet or that are on your body fat to make ATP. And once your cells have ATP, they can contract. Well, it turns out that these mitochondria about 10% of your body weight is comprised of these teeny little organ organelles. So they're mini organs with, you know, that's why they're called organelles. It turns out that they're also an intimately involved in an appropriate antiviral innate immune system response. So if you have poor mitochondrial health because you never exercise, you never walk, you don't lift weights, you don't intermittent fast, you're stacking all the time, you get poor sleep, you have sleep apnea, you're breathing through your mouth while you're sleeping, right? Well, guess what? You have poor mitochondrial health so therefore, number one, your cells don't have sufficient energy. There could be energy perturbations and insulin resistance. You might have fatigue. You might have brain fog. But should you get exposed to a pathogen like this pathogen, and we're going to dive into the specific mechanistic actions that SARS-CoV-2 exerts within the mitochondria and how mitochondrial health are important at releasing antiviral peptides and processes when you get exposed to a pathogen. So this could be why high levels of cardiorespiratory fitness and physical activity are protective. People who regularly exercise, I've shared with you the results from the, a major study out of uh, North, or sorry, South Korea, studies out of Sweden, studies here at Kaiser Permanente. Uh, there was another study at, um, it, it was Henry Ford Hospital in, in Michigan, 
all of these studies showed in various different ways, physical activity is protective against death, hospitalization, and severe disease. Of course, for whatever reason, the health experts are still not mentioning exercise. You know, your employer is not mandating exercise, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, it's, it's really important that we, that we continue to talk about this. And this is an overlooked aspect of mitochondrial health. Now, look, your mitochondria are important for liver health, for metabolic health, for brain health. So this, this message has crossover implications for all sorts of aspects of longevity. But I think it's important to keep talking about these things because you have family members in your life with the holidays coming up, with Thanksgiving and Christmas, who are like, whoa, if you don't do certain things, you're not allowed in my Thanksgiving table, or you can't come visit me during the holidays. These are conversations that are real, that are happening to people. Yet oftentimes the people who are saying that, like you can't come in my house unless you do this thing, right? You know what I'm talking about? Well, guess what? They, they often don't exercise. These are the people that often don't eat, even eat real food. They're chugging and gulping soda and they're not even taking care of themselves, yet they're, create, they're like creating this wall around them for people who are un, you know, unprotected. And that is a shame because we, we also need to encourage healthy living because that is part of being protected, right? Having an appropriate innate immune system response. So let's dive into the details of this. And before we get into it, friends, I want to welcome you back. I'm grateful that you're here. It's Mike Mutzel. If at any point you're enjoying this content, you know what to do. You can hit that like button, please. Make sure you're subscribed so that when you when we launch new videos like this, you get pinged and notified. And also, please leave a comment. That tells YouTube and the other video platforms that, you know what, this video was helpful. And that way, people who have the same interests as you will be notified. And if you're in iTunes, I'm just grateful that you're here. Okay, so the title of the paper is from these Swedish scientists, and there's many other papers um, that, that have talked about the importance of mitochondrial health that we will dive into here. And this was published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, Low Cardiorespiratory and Mitochondrial Fitness as Risk Factors in Viral Infections Implications for COVID-19. Okay, the scientists go on to say it seems reasonable that the beneficial effects of regular physical activity on immune function are at least partly mediated by mitochondrial fitness. As further outlined in these articles, both low mitochondrial fitness and low cardiorespiratory fitness may be important risk factors for the ongoing, ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, possibly representing a link between established risk factors like age, underlying health conditions like obesity, like high blood pressure, like diabetes, like chronic kidney disease, like liver disease, and much more, uh, and so forth. So physical activity... Uh, or targeted pharmacological interventions, possibly like taking berberine. You know, I'm a huge fan of berberine. Uh, I'll put links below to some of the products that I recommend in that regard. Also, if we think about metformin, metformin and berberine function very similar. And what's interesting is metformin as a pharmacological intervention, it actually has been shown to reduce risk for severe outcomes when it comes to the current public health problem. This has been long recognized over the last 18 months and no one is talking about it. It's really interesting. It seems that for whatever reason, metformin, at least the outcome data in these retrospective studies have shown that it's more protective for women than men, which was quite interesting, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so I got off target here um, when we were talking about pharmacological interventions to boost mitochondrial capacities are likely efficient to increase mitochondrial function and may, may enhance innate immunity in the face of SARS-CoV-2 infection. In addition, the exploration of mitochondrial functions or mitochondrial damage markers in accessible tissues like in the blood and so forth in response to SARS-CoV-2 infection may pave the way for the development of mitochondrial biomarkers that can help assess vulnerability. Well, let's pause here because as I was mentioning some of the various studies that correlate exercise capacity with reduced, with reduced severe outcomes and reduced risk for hospitalization and death for the current public health problem, one of those studies was actually on individuals who had a cardiovascular stress test at Henry Ford Hospital outside of Detroit. And what they actually showed was that individuals who had poor cardiorespiratory fitness, these stress tests, again, were pre-COVID. And they correlated that because they had the electronic medical records and found that those individuals with poor cardiorespiratory fitness had increased risk for severe disease, hospitalization, requirement for being on a ventilator, and also death. So this has been recognized. This has been long known. Uh, that other study that the major study, I think it was 200,000 subjects from South Korea found that low physical activity as per various medical records before the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak 
was linked with increased risk for even contracting a virus, this particular virus, but also poor outcomes. But again, the media never even talked about that. I mean, it's just insane that we're so focused on keeping everyone so safe, but we never mention exercise. I mean, it's just mind blowing to me. Okay, now what I would like to do here is share with you this image because this image shows the sort of dynamics between the mitochondria and how mitochondrial function is involved in the immune response is involved in producing free radicals and in, in oxidative stress. It's involved also uh, in uh, obviously energy production and so forth. So that's figure one from the article that we've been talking about. So the scientists want to say that the mitochondria are, are cellular power generators and regulators of metabolism and are critically involved in antiviral host responses. One important component of the innate immune system defense is mitochondrial antiviral signaling, also known as the acronym MAVS complex, which is on the exterior part of the mitochondria. Now, again, the mitochondria do so many different things. They are highly, I think, underemphasized, but yet critically important. And this, my friends, is, uh, I said this time and time over again, why exercise and intermittent fasting are so important because these are two strategies that are really accessible. Anyone can go out and walk. Anyone can do push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, air squats, lunges, hip thrusts in their home. These things are very important for fine-tuning your mitochondria as is feeding window compression. Now, of course, your diet really matters. You know, your mitochondria has a you know cell membrane and exterior, you know, uh, portion of that. So cell membrane health and, you know, the types of fats that you're eating are really important as is uh, the types of macronutrients. So if you're eating a bunch of sugar and carbohydrates, we know that these can be, these can be uh, challenging for mitochondrial health. So uh, getting back to this mitochondrial antiviral signaling complex, which is on the exterior part of the mitochondria, uh, the MAVS gets activated by a family of pathogen detecting receptors, including the retinoic acid receptor, the RLR. So remember, retinoic acid, you've heard about that. That's vitamin A. So vitamin A, fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin D are very important in your body's innate immune system response. So remember, fatty foods, fat-soluble um, nutrients, very important here. And so these retinoic acid receptors induce a response that includes the transcription of various interferons. Remember, we've talked about interferons and the importance of natural killer cells. And so these interferons are a very critical aspect of your body's antiviral immune response. And it turns out that it's not just natural killer cells and the various immune cells that release these interferons. Your own mitochondria can be involved in releasing these critically important antiviral interferons. And so uh, the article goes on to say these serve as a central molecule in the cellular defense against viruses. Okay, so let's close the gyms. Boom. Good idea. Close the gyms. Keep the parks closed. Keep everyone stuck in their homes, right? All right. To impair cellular immune antiviral defense mechanisms, many viruses evolve mechanisms to evade cellular detection by the RLR. So here's what's interesting about SARS-CoV-2. So if you possibly don't elicit a robust you know, sort of um, retinoic acid receptor defense response, which is mechanistically very important in your innate immune system. If that's not robust, then possibly that SARS-CoV-2 could evade that and then increase its amplification and viral load and pathogenicity. Okay, so they go on to say, uh, here are the manifold ways how RNA viruses and specifically SARS-CoV coronaviruses modulate mitochondrial function to evade innate immune system response of host cells were summarized and put into context with the current understanding of SARS-CoV-2. We argue that by enhancing or preserving mitochondrial function that may protect mitochondrial manipulation and dysfunction following infection. So again, if you already have weakened mitochondria, they're not properly, you know, you have maybe mitochondria that should have been uh, undergone the process of mitophagy, which is a subtype of autophagy, because you never intermittent fast and you never exercise. So they're kind of they're kind of rusty. They're kind of not functioning like they should be. You get exposed to a pathogen. It's not really going to induce this antiviral immune response sufficiently. So then your mitochondria are are not protecting you, and the virus can utilize your mitochondria and your your own cellular energy to replicate, divide, and, and amplify its own pathogenicity within your body. Okay, so in summary, the mitochondrial involvement in the innate immune system response to SARS-CoV-2 infection represents a mechanism targetable by lifestyle and pharmacological strategies. By the way, when it comes to supporting mitochondrial health, lifestyle is king. Lifestyle really improves mitochondrial function from exercise, from the fasting, feeding, wind, and compression, proper breathing, 
uh, you know, sleep and all of that. So it's a thorough investigation of a warranted for a better understanding of the pathogen host biology and the development of adequate treatment strategies. Pre-existing mitochondrial dis dysfunction, for example, due to increased age or diseases like heart disease, obesity, insulin resistance may represent factors contributing to differential vulnerabilities to SARS-CoV-2 infection and thus should be considered as a biomarker for the risk of infection and severity of outcome. So to make a long story short, exercise, exercise, friends, compress your feeding window, stop snacking all the time, give your body the ability to undergo this critically important process of autophagy. One of the main benefits of autophagy is not just preventing these misfolded proteins within your cells from, from accumulating and causing imbalances and protein levels within your cells, but a, a very critically important aspect of autophagy is mitophagy, is taking these dysfunctional mitochondria who should, who should you know, and chopping them up like in a Vitamix uh, and releasing some of those some of those factors to be sort of recycled and reused. That's what the process of mitophagy is, imp how it's important in, in the housekeeping process um, of, of cellular health and cellular energy. And, and here, obviously, mitochondrial health when it comes to your antiviral immune responses. And so if you never give your body the chance and sort of the signaling properties to in induce this mitophagy from exercise, from feeding window compression, possibly periodic calorie restriction and or fasting, then guess what? You're going to have squeaky, rusty mitochondria that may not properly mount an antiviral immune response. So it's important, friends, that lifestyle is medicine, that we need to recognize this, we need to acknowledge this, and we need to share this with our friends and family members who are obsessed with staying safe, but seemingly don't do anything to make their bodies more resilient and less vulnerable. So hopefully this information will help you spread that message that lifestyle is medicine. You can change your body's phenotypic expression and become more resilient and less vulnerable by the very actions that you take every single day. So let's spread that message. What I'm going to do here just to help you on your journey in sharing that is link some of these fascinating articles. I think this is a very important but under-recognized aspect about staying safe. Remember, your mitochondria are an important immune organ, or at least are involved in mounting an initial and robust immune response. Now, with the cold and flu season coming along, we got we to gotta continue to, to beat this drum and share this message. So as always, friends, I'm grateful that you tuned all the way in. Thank you for hitting that like button. What I will do is link some of the show notes below and also links to berberine, for example, which is an awesome natural compound that can help mitochondrial health as well. So definitely check that out. And we will catch you on a future podcast down the road. Have an awesome rest of your day. Bye now. Yeah.